Hello, this is Tom Walski from Bentley Systems, and in this video I'll be talking about conveying the results of a flushing plan to field operators. How do you prepare a report that the operators will be able to use to actually execute the flushing? In our earlier videos, we talked about uh, the, the steps involved in setting up uh, flushing studies and flushing events, and now we're going to get to the end that you've done the flushing planning, you have your results, and now you've got to get the message out. So what we're going to do is coming up with either a way to print the results or prepare a PDF that can be printed by someone else and uh, getting that information that you, based on what you did. So here we see where we ended up. We've done this area uh, in one of our earlier videos, and we have a map with the lines that have been flushed. The red one some of them did not get quite enough velocity. One of them doesn't have a hydrant at the end to flush. But in general, we've done a pretty thorough job flushing this, and we're satisfied that what we have presented here is going to be useful. So we have to get the results out. And notice here that we do have a background map with street names on it, because it's very important when you're doing this that you just don't uh, base it on the model drawing. You've got to have some kind of underlying GIS or street map or aerial photo, something that the operators can use to find out where they are, because they're not going to understand what H2 is or P127. They're going to want to have you know, things like Cherry Road or Oak Street or something like that as, as reference points. So this is what the uh, flushing manager would look like when you're done uh, laying out a bunch of, uh, an, let's say, an area-wide a set of events to flush this area. And notice some different things that you might have seen in some of our earlier videos. You see there's notes in the description of a given event, uh, which describes where the isolation valve is. It's on Maple Street at Pine Street. Uh, if there's two on Maple at Pine, you might want to say on the south side or the north side, or something like that. Uh, routes uh, 210 north of Maple, you know, very precise instructions so that the operator can find that location. Maybe it'll be 31 South Washington Street, some name like that that is useful. Notice also that the individual events have, have a name to describe the pipe run that you're trying to clean because this, this indicates to them, the operated, operations people, what you're trying to accomplish with each of these events. Now we have pretty wide note fields. You can, you can go in and specify very detailed notes if you want to, but usually you know, something short is going to be good because we're going to see the forms in which we print these need to be, uh, you know, you have only a certain amount of, of real estate in which to, to print out these instructions. So you, you don't want this to be you know, a long paragraph. You want it to be short, concise, uh, but give the information that an operator is going to need. So in order to actually come up with the report, it's very easy. You go to the report button, you can pick a down arrow, you could either do it by just that event, you could do it by the study, or do it by the whole area. So we're going to pick the area now, and we're generating the report. And we're done. So that was it. That was a very easy step. Uh, we have a fairly lengthy report here that we can go through. And I'll show you the kind of pages that you get. You get a title page. And then you get the actual drawing of the particular flushing event. This is the pipe run in orange, the hydrant to the flush in green, the valve to close to make this a unidirectional flush is shown in red. So it's very simple. And you have then text descriptions of what you have to do. Okay. But then also you have the ability to zoom in. We give you not only the, the, the overall view, like we do here, this is the overall view, but we also have these blow-ups because in some of these intersections, looking at it in this scale is very difficult. So if you just try to only show it at this very uh, large scale where you show the entire run, you might not get all the information you need because to figure out which valve exactly in the intersection. So in addition to a, the overall drawing and a text uh, description here in the files, you also have uh, blow-ups that you can select to show exactly which valves at each intersection you're going to be working with. Okay, here's another intersection. So you can see exactly now which valve is, oh, is uh, to be closed for this run, which valve is to be open from the previous run. And then you have some really good text information as well. Uh, here we'll go to some of the text. And notice what you get in the, the text description. You have the kind of numbers that you would use as a modeler, you know, H3, ISO, 19. Those are kind of things that you can use. But then you have these notes that say, to a person doing the operations, just exactly what those uh, hydrants and isolation valves are in terms of real world locations. 
They also give them an idea of what the pressure should be when they're doing the flowing and how much flow they ought to get out of the hydrant. This is the, the model estimate. Now we also provide ways for them to measure those kind of values, put them in, and from this they can uh, see how close you come. Because if these numbers are way off, there may be something wrong with the model or the way the, the system was set up or the flush was set up. Also, uh, given the pipe run that you're trying to clean, you also have a certain amount of time it's going to take for water to flow from one end of that pipe run to the other. And you also have a safety factor you can provide to say, okay, this is uh, how long it's going to take, but it's going to, we're going to flush for twice that length of time, for example. And also the volume of water you're going to use and the volume of water with that safety factor. There are also some fields here where the operator can bring back some notes as to when they started, uh, when they ended the flush, what's the date, and uh, who was it that did the flush. And also, they could make comments about the water quality when they first flowed the hydrant and when they, they finished, what the water quality looked like. So this is information not only going out to the field for the operators, but then to bring back and bring into the asset management system information about the flush, what they found. And this tends to be very useful sometimes when you have problems in the field. We also list the pipe run, but the pipe run usually doesn't mean quite as much to the, at least the text part of the pipe run. Now, the picture of it is very important, but the text part isn't usually that important. So we just usually have some uh, list of the pipe elements. We have the event name up here, though, which is important for the operator, you know, Route 210 to Maple Street. So with this now, you can just go right in and print it. We have all kinds of options up here. You can open up new ones. You could save this file as a PDF or other format. You can print it directly. You can set up the pages so they could be landscape or portrait. By default, we have this set up to be landscape view, but you could switch to portrait if that's what you like. You could put multiple pages on one sheet, for example. We do various kinds of scaling. So there's a lot of uh, power and flexibility in this. There's so many things that you can do, and you can move back and forth through the files and look at multiple page views and uh, put watermarks on. You just you know, go crazy here with all the, the features and things that we have. And notice we have a lot of things that you can do. This one here now, to do this flush, we're going to close this valve. We see that this valve was closed from the prior event. We're going to open this valve that was closed to the prior event. Then we're going to reopen one that we had closed earlier. So there's some, some individual operations that we will describe and try to make it really clear what you're going to do from one flush to the next. Now, again, sometimes people want to see this as a landscape view. Sometimes they want to see it in portrait view. There's a lot of things you can do by exporting this PDF file out and setting up your prints. Uh, one of the things that someone asked for was the ability to show multiple pages, to, to have an 11 by 17 sheet with two of these landscape pages printed portrait on it. Now, that's uh, kind of sounded confusing, but it looks something like this. And here just shows you the kind of layout you can do to have multiple sheets. And each of those has the text description of the event and a drawing of the event. And we can go through with these things and lay out what you want your report to look like. So there are tools and there are descriptions on how you lay out these individual reports. So there's a lot of capability here to make it uh, easy for you to convey the information. Uh, to the field operators. And one of the things we encourage is to use color printing. A lot of uh, the, the value of what we do comes from the, uh, the use of color. And if you don't have, aren't using color, you lose a lot of this. So we encourage you, when you are printing this, to use color printing for these various views. OK, so that wraps up our, our sessions on flushing. So we've looked at how to set up flushing events, different kinds of flushing, the philosophy behind flushing, and now finally, how to convey the results of flushing to field operations crews. Thank you.